Dear colleagues, this is Fekomel's vacation of a cataract with grade 4 nuclear sclerosis and 4.5 mm pupil. The ocular surface is thoroughly irrigated with ringer lactate, applying few drops of povidone iodine. Povidone iodine has been applied in the preparation room for 3 minutes. Now we are going to start the case. This is 2.8 mm main incision. And now two side ports are to be made. This is the side port on the right side and this is another side port on the left side. See the eyeballs are supported by a cotton tipped bud and at no point of time a tooth forceps is used that is to prevent subconjunctival hemorrhage. Air bubble is injected and underneath this air bubble this is tripan blow dye. Little bit of adrenaline is injected to see if the pupil dilates. But in this case the pupil didn't budge. So the size of the pupil is such that I was hoping that I will be able to manage this case without using any pupil expansion device. But I know that I have to do a rexis which is larger than the size of this people. Now see how to do that. Make doing a rexis which is larger than the size of the people. Capsule tag has been raised to the 26 case band needle. Now I go beyond the margin of the people. Yes, beyond the margin of the people and with habitual movement I can do this rexis which is little larger than the size of this people. So I now know that the rexis has been adequate for this cataract. Now how to do hydrodissection? Go along the surface of the cataract underneath the anterior capsular rim and do hydro a little bit at multiple points. Now try to mobilize the nucleus. The lens is moving but I want more free movement. I'm doing some more hydro little bit and now I'll inject viscoelastic substance and take two instruments in my two hands. Left hand he is having the chopper. I have taken a Sinsky hook in my right hand and now with these two instruments I can move the nucleus like this. Since the pupil is small, it is very important that the nucleus rotates freely. And now is the time to introduce the tip of the FECO handpiece. And in this case, I have to do vertical chop because I cannot go to periphery. I can't see the rexus margin. I can't do horizontal chop. Now how to do that? Hold the nucleus right at the center, embed the chopper just in front of the phaco teeth and divide the nucleus anteroposteriorly. This is vertical chop. Hold the nucleus, place the chopper just in front of the phaco teeth and divide it like this. So this is vertical chop. Divide the nucleus anterior posteriorly. So, this is one more. This is the other heminucleus. Hold it and chop it. So, you can see vertical chop in this case very nicely. And now, each nuclear fragment is to be removed. At this time, the pupil has become smaller. Probably, it is 3.5 millimeter now. Now, FECO power, that is ultrasonic energy percentage, in this case is 70%. Flow rate is 45 ml per minute. Vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. This is the easy tip of Oatly FECO machine. Beautiful machine, no financial interest, but I am very happy with this machine. 
and now this is the last nuclear fragment I remove the chopper at this time and do it single-handedly because why I remove the chopper because if I remove the chopper there is no leakage from the side port and the chamber becomes more stable now see there is a small nuclear fragment just in front of the left side port so what to do now I push this nuclear fragment and now I escort this fragment out by a Simcoe cannula. This is, has to be done first before aspirating cortical matter because we don't want to lose this nuclear fragment somewhere under the iris. And now how to remove the cortical matter? You can't see the cortex but with experience with sweeping motion we can catch the cortex and remove it that's it now viscoelastic substance is being used and since the people is small I want to place the capsule uh, lens in the bag. I'm enlarging the incision to about 3 mm so that the cartridge, the tip of the cartridge goes into the entry chamber and I can nicely place the lens in the bag. Here I am observing the direction of the haptic. Yes, it should go into the bag. The trailing haptic will be dialed by the Sinsky hook into the capsular bag. Yes. Now I'm checking whether it is in the bag or not. Yes. The lens is in the bag. So with Sinsky hook, just retract the iris and check if the lens is in the bag or not. In this case, it was in the capsular bag. Now we have to remove the viscoelastic substance very nicely. So at this time the BS is being irrigated into the anterior chamber. And now this is the irrigating probe of bimanual IA. I go behind the eye well and irrigate the capsular back. And nicely we have to irrigate the capsular bags, capsular bag so that we can remove the viscoelastic substance nicely. Irrigation and aspiration probes have been used simultaneously. Now, this is a bit of moxifloxacin. Now, the side ports are hydrated to make these wounds waterproof. And we are towards the conclusion of this case. Now this is the final lavage of anterior chamber with BSS. This patient belongs to our free category service, free service category and hope we have done justice to this patient. Thank you very much for your attention.